Hey, hey, everyone, this is Dan, the GM, bringing you episode 130 of What the Dice. That's right, my friends, that's right. 130 episodes, and wow, I think we are almost, almost through season one. But we are continuing our push for more Spotify ratings. That's right. We are trying to fight the Spotify algorithms by getting some ratings and some listens. So all you got to do is continue listening because you're awesome like that. But also give us a rating. Any rating that you give us is definitely going to get us moved up and around in the algorithms. So yeah, let's continue those ratings, shall we? And don't forget, if you want to do more than that, you can go over to whatthedice.weebly.com. Join our Discord Follow and subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter. All of that and telling your awesome friends about us. So that's all I got. I'm going to shut up and let you get with on with this week's episode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 130 of What the Dice. We find ourselves walking through the cold wind, listening to our feet crunch down on the solid snow and ice. We get to the storyteller's campsite, and the fire is raging outside, and the storyteller is sitting, flipping through the pages, seemingly unfazed by the cold weather. He looks at us and smiles. Ah, oh, well, 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 me friends. Welcome, welcome. Sit, sit. I know it is bitterly cold out, but sometimes the cold wind feels good on these old bones. Now, let us return to our story, shall we? It seems as if one of the mysterious voices, a strange gambler, known as Lucas Green has made himself known, and the scientist has not. It seems as if the party has something to deal with. Either work with Lucas Green and help with these generators, or, as the scientist puts it, put a bullet in his head. So the team must decide, deal with Lucas, or destroy Lucas. The team is out of their element, and our story continues. Sit back, relax, and hear me tell. In the last episode, you guys got to meet Lucas Green, a casino lead casino owner and one of the intelligent addicted as well as dealing with a very flustered scientist which still has not given her her name and given the quest to either go restart some generators or go put a bullet in lucas's head whichever you choose to go this seems to have um flustered annoyed whatever we choose to say Kalila and the others just because of the quick like A or B choice like help or death no cake is involved we come back after the team has defeated one of these strange rat pines that looked a little weak what would you guys like to do well now that I have a chance after it's fallen dead I will investigate it same here <laughs> Roll, uh, survival. 37. As you investigate the body, you notice multiple burn marks and electrical scarring, as well as what looks like maybe frostbite on some of the base of its quills and on its underneath its fur. It looks like this rat is in a area that is constantly in a active zone for the infected, or at least people who have the ability to use those strange vials. It looks like this thing was 
A survivor of a prior attack before us. I would say so. Kind of deep hole, though. It's got, it looks like a porcupine went demonic. <laughs> it is definitely something. Large round quills. I wonder, did the people here make these? Or was it an effect from all of the stuff? Oh, I wonder if the rats eat the stuff. Yeah. I would. T he looks back at Hugan. Hugan, do not eat any of the liquid needle stuff. Get a couple of foot taps. Man, I don't want to think about that. And you, little rat guy, don't do that either. You get a chitter. What did that translate to? I think that was acknowledgings. Or I'm going to eat your brains while you're sleeping. He hasn't yet. Yet. As you guys are talking, you hear the chime overhead. It is now 12 p.m. Lunch has now been started in the buffet area in the casino floor. Please have your new yen chips ready as well as your identification if you are planning on having the all-you-can-eat special. Again, the time is 12. Thank you. Such a polite thing. I say we keep going down this hallway before more of those rat pines show up. Into the hallway? Yes. Down the hallway. As you get here, the door has been blown off its hinges, and you can tell that this is a little bit more maintenance. You see wires dangling from the roof that have been severed and damaged. You see multiple closets that the doors are either off the hinge. You see one that is just to the north of you that the door looks like it is still intact, but it is open and it has been ransacked. All over the floor you see tore up clothing, broken broom handles, and the giant elephant in room is the generator that is currently offline. Every now and then you'd see a small stray spark from it, but you see no power, no status. Any of the screens around it are black and powerless. Well, I think the big thing is what we're supposed to be fixing. Yep, I kind of agree that's probably it. Now, well, I... what happened oh. here? Gonna look around and investigate. All right. Perception. Twenty-five. Thirty-two. Twenty-five. Thirty-two. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. As you guys look around, it looks like there was a major battle that broke out. You get a good chance to look at the different types of the addicted that are here, and you see some of them are have some kind of metal embedded in their body, eyes, uh, things like that. And then you see some that are a little bit more mundane. The ones that have the different metal bits are dressed in more what would be considered civilian clothing. You see pants and stuff like that. And then the other infected seem like they're wearing something a little bit more akin to what the Fibulous is wearing, just in a lighter sense. You see these pants with extra pockets that have reinforcing on certain areas. You see belts that have multiple pockets. You see their, on their hands what look like claws that have been embedded into their hand. You also see the infected that have the claws in their hand. You see in their, or on their wrist, you see a small metal bangle and it says level two clearance and it looked like they burrowed in from above this does not have a glass dome above it it's just what a regular ceiling a uh, metal ceiling with 
poles and wires da- that are dangling low. So we found a key card we need to go upstairs. Uh, they're more like bracelets. They're not key cards. Oh, okay. Man, it looks like there's been some really crazy stuff going on here. Seems like everything down here is just in a constant fight. Faye is quietly collecting at least two of the level two bangles. They are... You're going to have to find a way to cut it because it is not like a loose bangle. These look like they are almost embedded in the skin. That is how tight they are. Or break the arm off. Or break the arm off. Which is exactly what Faye does. She grabs a sword and chops off a hand. Uh, roll your strength. 21. Yeah, you hit something solid and it doesn't feel like bone. It feels like you just chopped into something metal. Can I start peeling back the flesh to see? Mm Mm-hmm. You, but information is important. Inside the skin, once you peel back and what you expect to see is bone, you see metal that is bone-shaped and laced with different types of strange patterns of wiring. Hey, DeFabulous. Yo. Just kind of ignore the gore, but look at this. Uh, what? Are we skinning humans? I have no idea. But that's really neat. Reminds me of the rats from Godsfeld, except with humans. Oh, good point. Tiferous will take out his little his little notebook and some of the sketches he did of the some of the dead rats, and he's going to look and study some of the sketching he did and see if any of this kind of matches up with those rats. Uh, similar, but very different because you're talking. This is more of a full replacement of the bone where. The Godspell rats were more like pieces of the bone was replaced. Or it's a coating over the bone. Right. Not cl- close, but not quite. I wonder what this wire does. Poke at the wire. Reflex check. A reflex save or just. Yeah, reflex save. 32. As you tap the wire, you move just in time as the hand twitches and you see those blades come inches from your own leg. As the hand just drops limp again. Neat! Well, all right then. Um, if you're going to try to get that off, I would recommend maybe going for like... uh, Anatomy, human anatomy is not my best strong suit. But go for like the arm, the elbow joint, try to get through that, and then work from there. Or the wrist. I'm gonna use decompose corpse again so that I can get rid of the flesh and see the joints better. Okay. And okay. M- maybe guide some strikes a little bit better. It turns oh into the Terminator. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. <laughs> As the flesh slowly burns away, you see that the skeleton is completely silver from head to toe. Even the joints look like they have been reinforced and you see strange wiring that is connecting between where it basically replaces the sinew between joints and everything on this skeleton is now metal. All right, so now that I can see all the bits and pieces and stuff, is that clearance bracelet integrated into the skeleton and wiring, or can it be easily separated? Looking closer, it looks like it's actually integrated. Like, there are little pins that are driven from the bracelet into the strange boning. Cool. We're going to break off the elbow joint, then. Strength check. Dirty 20. You pull and you twist and... It looks like whatever those wires are, they're reinforcing it, and you're not able to quite rip it off, but you were able to stretch it out enough to where you can see that you might be able to to cut the individual wiring. Sounds like a probable plan. I'll see if Defibulous will help me cut the wiring. Mm, Defibulous will study the 
You're trying to get what part off again? I just want to be able to take the damn clearance bracelet with us so we can wave it at whatever sensors we need to get by. <laughs> Defibulous will study the arm, the armature itself, and how will the bracelets connect and see if he can come up with a better plan of attack. Well, it looks like the the bracelet is literally, you would fit skin and muscle between it. It's just above the wrist joint. And it looks like there are pins that are driven from the back of the bracelet into the boning. But they also look thick enough that, you know, it, you might be able to cut it if you had the proper tools, but you might not have the proper tools. What about that toolbox you picked up? He picked up a toolbox. He might have a tool. What about those new tools you got? Ooh, very good point. He'll, he'll whip out that toolbox and start going through the tools to see if he has a cutting one. Mm, yeah, that's something that looks like a pair of wire dikes. Curiously, like, all right, um, stand back in case this thing, like, stabs again. Kalila will take a step back, but as she does, didn't uh, somebody say there was more than one? She's going to find another body with another of those bangles and see if it is equally attached. Or if it's just this guy. Uh, you would have to cast Decompose Flesh again to get to the bone. Right now, there's flesh in the way. I have cat claws. Oh, so you're just going to start... Well, it's not very hard. I can just take a, a claw, dig it in, and pull, like, kind of do that whole curl and tug and see if I hit metal. You are definitely hitting metal as you are clawing in. Uh, Defibulous, I just need a knowledge engineering... Well, uh, profession engineering. 28. You sit there and you start to cut and you cut and you twist and you cut and whatever is holding it together doesn't feel like wire. It almost feels like a rivet, a... And you're guessing it's about a quarter or a, an eighth of an inch thick rivet in, from the back of the bangle into the boning. So you could probably do it, but it would probably destroy this tool. He'll take a look at that rivet and see how strong, how, how durable he thinks that rivet is. You have not seen metal like this before. I wonder if I could use a bit of a, one of my bullets, you know, pack it into something we'll say and create a little blast and blow it off. I'm gonna look around the room for tools to see if there's anything in here. You did say there was broken brooms and stuff. Maybe there's other tools. Yeah, this is a maintenance room. I'm looking for other tools. I mean, all Defibulous has to do is mention the word blow something up and everyone runs and goes and finds a better means worried that it would destroy the bracelet as much as it would because it's a very tiny like area so yeah you might get it off but you might do it destroy it in the process I'm all about the explosions but that kind of defeats the purpose don't you think hey you guys said you wanted it off you didn't say you wanted it functional do you want new tools yes okay then uh go ahead and roll uh perception to search 34 Dicking around, you go through the different closets, and you find that there are actual, like, full toolboxes like what Defibulous had found. Some of them are locked, which, you know, a handful of them that are, you can shove off to the side and fake and pick. You find a couple that are open that, you know, they're missing a tool or hit there because there's an open spot. And then you find this small little device. It's about the size of your hand, and it has a small little, what looks like arc piece at the front you've seen something similar to it on lighters and it looks like it might be battery operated is it like the blowtorch the snakes gave us like that but more advanced hey defibulous remember the torch the snake gave us yeah i remember that this thing looks like it will it work it melted the door last time surely it can melt the bracelet I will definitely give that a try. Hand the tool over. Okay. Ooh, this thing is pretty. Fibus will see if he can fire it up. Yeah, it lights up and it's a very small projection, but you don't feel heat per se, but it does light up the room a, a 
a very bright red. He's like, all right, you guys should probably shield your eyes because this is awfully bright. Is there any helmets that she can give to Fabulous? Nope. My own goggles work as shielding me from that. Don't you have Walter's goggles? Yeah, those are his goggles. Then yes, they would work. Okay, he will put his goggles down. Time to get to use my goggles. Been a while. Does it feel good? Yes. Everyone's eyes shielded? Uh, puts her paws kind of over her eyes, but she's still kind of looking around to make sure they don't get ambushed. Faye just kind of turns her back to watch the rest of the room. Mr. Skellingsworth, color shield your... Oh, wait, never mind. Wait, does he have eyes, Faye? No, he does not. Okay. But you get bone rattling in, in acknowledgement. The Fibulous will uh, try that uh, torch on the rivet. It burns through the rivet almost instantly. The metal melts pretty quick as you're able to go through and get all four points of contact. And you're able to slip the, brain, the bangle off. But something doesn't feel right. He'll check the bangle. The bangle seems to have a vibration to it. And it's starting to vibrate faster and faster. He will pitch the uh, bracelet well away from the group. As the bracelet hits the ground, it explodes with a, a pulse of electricity. Kind of like a transformer that is overloaded. What happened? Mm, sneaky. They yelped and startled. Mm, I'm guessing these bangle thingamajiggers are wired into their body so much that they're booby trapped. We should have taken it off at the elbow. We have another one as she holds up an arm attached to a body. Faye, if you, uh, if you will uh, melt the flesh, uh, we'll cut it off. Flesh melty. Okay. The melt. Uh, you see another metal skeleton. Try the elbow. The Fibus will, will try this one at the elbow. With the welder? Yeah. Okay. Kalila's sitting there looking at Faye going, now you're starting to get it. Well, look, the mechanical aspect of things is new to me, but it's not unknown to me to bring a chunk of whoever you need to get past. Oh, no, I meant the whole, uh, you know, maybe those shots of whiskey did you good. I wish I had more. <laughs> oh, what happens when I remove it at the elbow? You are now holding a severed limb with a bangle attached to it. He'll wave it. He'll take the, ar the arm and wave at everyone with it. Oh. It doesn't go limp like you would expect. It actually holds its form. I don't know if I should be impressed or disturbed. Here you go. Here's your arm. Thank you. You got one bangle. Defibus will turn off that welder and put that in his pouch. It has three uses left. What do I call it? Just torch? Uh, it's a laser cutter. Defibus goes, well, now that you got, now that you guys have your bangle, I'm going to look around the room for fun stuff to take with me. Yeah, I found all these tool chests that she, like, points to the, like, some of Ooh. them are locked, though, so Faye's gonna have to lock unlock them. I can do that. Um, we can do that at a later point. I'll just throw them in a the bag of holding for now. Alright, how many tool chests is that? There are three of them that are locked. This has been a great adventure already. Look at all the fun stuff I'm getting to play with. And you don't even know. They're mysterious boxes for you. I know, it's like just... It's like, it's like a holiday where they give presents to you that are all concealed. Faye has wandered over to the hole in the ceiling that apparently everybody else, the, 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 the addicted have dropped through. Mm-hmm. She's wondering if they can climb up and get up to the second level. Um, well, that's a, uh, you would have to climb up into it to see but it is pitch black up there 
can cast Lantern and holds up her broom. Faye casts light on one of her daggers and takes the broom. So going in there? Um, I think I'm going to at least check it out, yeah. Okay. Kalila will have Hugin stream a little web ladder for her, and Kalila will follow, climbing. As you get in, this opening, you would have to belly crawl through. You see sparking wires, and you see steam venting. It looks like this was maybe an access panel for a long time ago for repairs in this area, and it looks like it had been forgotten. And you can hear something scraping through. And as your light casts down, you see two red eyes and then a face. Its jaw is dislocated and hanging loose and it is starting to pull itself towards you slowly. Its hands digging into the metal as it drags its body towards you, slowly gaining speed. Time to retreat. Not fighting in this area. Nope, not that way. Not that way. Kalila comes jumping back down, going, we might have company. Oh, 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 okay, hold on. Uh, I think I picked up the sneaky boomy rocks. I'm going to put one directly under the opening so that it falls on one. Okay. Kalila is definitely getting out of the way. Yep, we are all moving into the hallway, like, now. Fabulous? I'm gonna follow. As she quietly whispers as a Faye is setting up her sneaky boomy rock, she goes, I'm so proud of her. She's, she's setting an explosive. As you guys move down the hallway, this strange thing drops in and you get a glance of it. It's only a torso. As it lands on the sneaky boomy rock, it explodes. Faye, what is the damage on that? Ooh, it will do 2d10 plus 2 damage. The crit range is a 20. And if it crits, it gets triple damage. Mm-hmm. I rolled a 19 for the crit. Damn, so close. Well, it does splatter. And viscera and metal bits scatter across the the room. So it was a wonderful splat. Boom! Mm-hmm. Right, so I have rolled a 10 and an 8, plus the 2 is damage. Yeah, you no, you're good. This thing didn't have a whole lot of HP. It was mostly a torso. Although yeah. that's really creepy that it was still alive and it was just a torso. I don't know what's creepier, this or the bone god? <laughs> you. So, um, if it went splattering, can we go check and see if it was another one of those weird metal skeletons? Oh, yeah, no, it was a metal skeleton. Okay, so at least that was obvious. You knew it was a metal skeleton when its hand went flying past you and it was all metal. That would be a definite tell. There's a chime overhead. Attention. The time is 2 p.m. The all-you-can-eat buffet is now closed. Thank you. I think we should try and fix this generator before we lose too much time. Because even Lucas said to hide at night. And we know they turned the lights off at 8. Defibulous, do you even know how to fix this? Why would you ask if I know how to fix it? I should be able to fix anything, right? That's why I'm hoping your answer is a yes, but we've never seen anything like this before. I mean, I know you're good with guns, but that seems a bit... different. Uh, 
I'm sure I can figure something out. I mean, he's figured out everything else so far, so I'm willing to give me space to work. I'll watch the southern hallway, you watch the western. Yeah, that'll do. And I will set Mr. Skellingsworth in the middle of the room to watch upward the hole. Yeah, Hugin can rest on the ceiling and warn us of anybody coming down. The fibulous. I need a knowledge engineering. 30 on the nose. With a 30, you walk around this massive generator, which has some bits and pieces that you recognize that is very reminiscent of the Murdoch. And then you see things that are very reminiscent of Godspell. You see wires that are clearly needing to be attached. You see hoses that probably need to be synced back in and you see that there is no electrical charge to it so it needs to be jump started based on that role you know that you're going to have to reattach everything clear any of the debris that's within inside the generator area the inner wall and then give it a spark you estimate this will take about three hours to do the Pibbles will walk out a way back away from the... Alright, I got news and I got news. Alright. First news. I might be... I should be able to fix it. Excellent. Other news, it's gonna take about three hours. Alright. Why don't we break for some food and then we... Can we help? Or is this gonna be an all-you kind of thing? Um... Well, a lot of it's like reconnecting parts A to B to C to Z... And then I got to clear out all the stuff that's jammed inside the inner wall area. And then I got to jumpstart it. Are the reconnections easy for us to figure out? Can we do that while you clean or can we clean while you reconnect? I think we should probably clean while he reconnects. And then I'm guessing jumpstart means it needs a spark of electricity. Don't we have an injector for that? I also have like I can cast a lightning bolt down on it. I think that might actually be safer than (laughs) the injectables. I don't know, because I don't know if the injectable hits it with a certain amount where a lightning bolt kind of fluctuates in power, doesn't it? Yeah, I I mean, it kind of could. And then the aggressive thundercloud. I mean, I can cast some lightning spells, but... And can they fit inside the inner wall area too clean, or is that... Yes, it's big enough for two people to walk comfortably next to each other. And it's a lot of clearing out debris, like, you know, there's a body or two in there, there's metal pieces, and it looks like that track is for something to spin around. So you definitely want to make sure that bottom track is fully cleared out. And that three hours is with their help. Oh, okay. So yeah, I could definitely use you guys to clear out the inside wall area. That lower area has got to be really clean because something's going to run on that by the looks of it. Got it. We'll start cleaning then. Cleany, cleany. Skelly Gardy. Yep. Same with Hugin. What's Mugen doing? He's a, I don't know. He can try and help clean. Or he can guard. Somebody needs to watch. Okay. So he's on guard duty. So he's just going to patrol. As you guys begin to clean and the fibulous goes around connecting wires, time slowly passes. As the three-hour marker hits, you hear chime. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now 5 p.m. The casino main hall will now be open for entertainment. Please be aware that this is for 18 and up. Any minors, please return to your room. Thank you. As Defibulous connects the last wire, two large paddles drop down about three inches. And once you are all out of the way, the sensors kick in and they lower all the way. There's a mild hum as the system is now waiting for the jump start. Sale takes a potion. The, the injector this time. 
Okay. Everybody else has had one. Yeah, going... Is it saying it needs two? Or just the one? It just needs a jump start. All right, well, she'll take the other one and pocket it. Davibulus will show her where to apply the power to. He shows you a large copper ball that is sitting just outside as if it was designed for this. Are you injecting yourself? Pokey pokey, zappy zappy. As you inject yourself, you can feel lightning course through your veins and you can feel almost a hum buzz through your skeleton and you can feel just that tingle of static electricity all around you. Your eyes spark with some blue lightning for just a moment. Well, I'll wake you up in the morning. Now, Defibulous did walk, told you that you are going to need to discharge the electricity into this brass ball. I'm sorry, this copper ball that you are staring at. How do you want to do it? <laughs> Faye's going to shuffle her feet just kind of in memory and then touch the ball. As you shuffle your feet against the metal floor, everyone can see little trails of sparks as your feet move. And as your fingertips, fingertips start to touch the ball, there is a massive electrical discharge from your body, sending huge amounts of electricity coursing from your body into this ball. The system starts to boot up rather quickly the lights start to brighten and the paddles start to spin faster and faster until a metal mesh and metal and glass mesh shield slides down across it protecting it from anyone getting falling in and you can feel that last bit of electricity you leave your body and enter this orb and you hear the intercom click on. Hoy hoy, Chama. Looks like we got one generator up and running. I can hear those uh, roulette tables are spinning, and I can hear the music are playing. Uh, there's a, a door just ahead. I'm gonna be uh, sending my code down to that data pad you got. Uh, the one with my name on it, my ID. We'll have the code in just a moment. I'll, uh, I'll snap that down to you. Good job. Good job, Chubba. Always believed in you. And the comm clicks off. His name tag or the data pad? His name tag. Oh, okay. I'm still not getting used to being called Chummer, even though now I know it means friend. Friend, pal, buddy. Hmm. Go ahead, let's do the thing. That and Kalila's still looking at the generator like, what in the world is before me and how did we even fix this giant metal monstrosity? She doesn't understand it. It's just bewildering her a little bit. Like, I'll, you just, how, do you, how did you even figure out what goes into what? That's part of what I do. I study stuff like this so I can make it myself. That's really impressive, Defibulous. I really don't understand it. That's all right. I don't understand half your hunting stuff you do either. Lo and behold, as you come around, there is a door and you see a, a keypad on it. Looking at the badge, you get the code. And just as Lucas promised, you type in the badge and the door slides open with ease. This room is very different than what you would expect. You feel like you are behind a stage to begin with you see ropes that have rotted away and the the pipe system has come loose you see floorboards that are just warped and damaged and you just see kind of like a just a, a massive stage that's just worn out and hasn't not seen the best of times and you see addicted shambling around digging through bodies and you see one grabbing 
one of the strange injectables and it quickly injects itself and it gives out a sigh of relief as it shumbles off looking for its next shot. The room is quiet besides the shambling of the addicted. They are ignoring you for the most part. Is this part of the family addicted or does this seem more like the feral addicted? They seem they're either too caught up in their own hunt for whatever they're looking for or they are part of the family. You you can't really tell. As you step out on the stage, you can see that there are no seats. It's a, a standing theater only, except for some sky boxes that are up high. Behind you, a ladder leads up to the fly system above. What do you want to do? Well, stage day? Like, what you're standing on is like a like Vegas style stage. So this was an entertainment area. Mm-hmm. It looks like what you came through was maybe like a backstage, a loading area that they also doubled as a maintenance facility. I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather not start a fight with all the addicted thingamajiggers out there. I agree. But there's no successful way to go back because it's blocked off. You can always climb up into the step up there. Yeah, well, there was a, a addicted that was in the ceiling last time. I can go up there and scope it out, see if it's safe. Send the spider. Up, Hugan goes. All right. Because he has tremor sense, so if anything's even moving up there, he'll know. You walk up there and there's the fly system and then above that, the, the railing system. And then you see what we would know or any Star Trek fan would know is the Jeffrey's tube that goes up. The door has been sealed and bolted and it looks like it was bolted from the opposite side. The inside, the outside. Uh, it was bolted from above it. So it's a tube that's going straight up. So somebody Just left in a that. hurry and then closed it behind them. And jam no, it looks like, so you go up into the fly lines and then there is a set of ladders that goes up into a tube and it looks like someone had shut and locked it. But when you, tr when a uh, Hugan tries to like open it, it feels like someone had jammed it so it doesn't open. All right. Well, I can see through his eyes so I can relay that to Defibulus going there looks mm -hmm. to be like another jammed door up there. I don't know what we could open it from this angle, though. I don't think the cutter even has enough juice in it to cut the entire door open. What about the crowbar? Uh, if we can get the right leverage, maybe, but I don't know. All right. Is there a way other than that out of that area to get around all of these uh, addicted or is that the only way? That seems to be the only way if you want to go that route. Now, this is a theater with standing room, so you could, they're shambling. They don't look like they can move very fast. Some of them look like they have leg injuries. Like one of them looks like, it looks like its leg has been damaged because it's kind of crippled it. And they're just shambling around. They they seem to be ignoring you. You're in bright lights. You're on a, a house lit stage and they just are ignoring you. This must be the family. Why don't we hug the wall and see if we can walk around them? Sounds good to me. Let's try. Making your way slowly around the outside wall. It seems as if they are part of this strange family as they find another injectable in it. Instead of taking it themselves, they hand it off to someone else who seems to have a slightly different look to them instead of like red or blue. Their hair has a slight staticiness to it. They inject it and they give off a, a deep hard sigh as they seem to be calming down. <coughs> as you exit, you head out into this area. This area is a lobby. You see a broken ticket booth. You see on the sign behind you the great 
Razaro, orc of a thousand spells. And it is a orc in a, a top hat and a fine dress suit with a bow tie. And in his hand, doves are flying. And in his other hand, he is making a rope stand up on its own with no strings attached. And it's a very cheesy kind of holographic poster for this magician. And all I have is putting on the red stuck in my head. Famous as Barkova. Oh, <laughs> uh, Baka would love to see this. Yes, he probably would. Is it a poster it... poster or a holographic poster? It's a holographic poster. Ah, darn. Uh, but as you look around, you do see that to the east, it looks like there's a like a gift shop. There, there's stuffed animals and posters and pictures and you know magician hats for children. Investigate the gift shop. Okay. As you investigate, I need a perception check. Is there a plushy orc? I need a plushy orc. Right? Like I want. I did. <laughs> Is this a perception check for all of us? Anyone who is investigating the gift shop. 19 on my roll. 33. I cannot math, but it's over 30. As you dig around, you you find a poster of this guy, and he is definitely an orc, and he is wearing fancy polished shoes of... That, that classic magician outfit, even the cape with the red inside, you find a, like, do-it-yourself magician's kit. You also find a plushy orc of this guy, or, a, yeah, a plushy of this guy, as well as, like, plushy doves and other cheesy, like, gift shoppy stuff. Kalila will find the plushy and hand it to Faye, being like, Baka? <laughs> is going to collect one of everything plus one extra plushy orc and shove them all in the bag of holding. Okay. And then as you're digging around, one of you go behind the register and you find this strange piece of plastic and it says Nuyen. And you look around and you notice that everything here costs Nuyen, not gold fumbling around with the card, or you hit something and it displays 25,000 new yen. Is that what it's asking us to pay or did it give us 25,000 new yen? That's what's on the card. Ooh, neat. <laughs> you know, Lucas said something about all the new yen you want. Do you think this is valuable? Uh, I think it's their currency. All right, putting it in the bag. Oh, currency got a lot easier to manage now, back then. Right, imagine that in gold pieces. 25,000 gold pieces floating around. If it's one for one. It's heavy. It's a lot. So there was a plushy orc, a beginning kit for stage magic, and what else? A poster. There's a couple hats. And then you also and then you also have like the cliche like uh, Vegas style um, snow globes and stuff like that. And one of them's actually of the Miranda, the outside of it. So you see this multi-tiered thing with glass orbs all around. Well, that's kind of cool. Is there also a snow globe of the, the this orc? Yes. But instead of, like, pieces of snow, it looks like it's, like, pieces of feathers. All right, that's cute. I think Baka would love to see that another fancy man orc. Souvenirs, man. Taking him home. What else would you guys like to do in here, if anything? I just wanted to get a souvenir for Baka. Okay. Do you want to continue on? Yep. Not unless somebody else wanted to dig harder. Like I said, Kalila just wanted a souvenir for good old Baka. Yes. And she took a little snow globe of the Miranda for herself as a memento. As you exit out of the lobby and you head into this area that is very reminiscent of like a street corner. It's painted out to where it looks like it has black asphalt and these strange lanterns and fake 
storefronts about, there is a loud click. And the power in this area goes black. And that is where we're going to end this episode. Well, 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 me friends. It seems as if the adventurers have found strange things, gifts for friends of all kinds. And while exiting this shop that houses these strange gifts, the lights suddenly click off, leaving the adventurers in a darkness, surrounded by this strange family. Well, next time, we will find out what, who, and why. But the moon is high, and it is time for us to say farewell. As always, me friends, may the dice gods bless your every roar. We here at What the Dice would like to thank Paizo for creating Pathfinder, Epidemic Sound for our music, as well as Sirenscape for our sound effects. If you would like to reach out to us, you can do so on Facebook at What the Dice Pod, Twitter at What the Dice Pod, and of course email WhatTheDicePod at gmail.com. And if you liked our little adventure, please share us with your friends and rate and review us. 